Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I have so many farmhouse DIYs to share with you. I love decorating my dining room and I thought it'd be fun to just clear off my hutch and my table, go to the thrift store, go to Dollar Tree, get some DIYs to do for my hutch. So that's exactly what I did for this video. And if you guys are liking my new background, I just recently posted a video where I showed you how I updated my living room. So I'll link that in the description box if you want to watch that video next. So let's get started on my hutch. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I have this white hutch in my dining room and I love decorating it. Recently, I've been following Alicia English and she had a really cool buffet that she just painted. And I was kind of getting this like feeling that I wanted to do something like that in my dining room and maybe put shelves above it to decorate. So you guys will have to let me know if you'd like to see that look in my dining room or if you think that I should just stick with my white hutch. So on the top of my hutch, I have a farmhouse sign. I made this probably about a year ago on my channel. I love the way it looks. It just fits perfectly up there, so I'm gonna leave that, but everything else is changing. So on the left side of my hutch, I found this really cool basket at the Goodwill. This basket was $3. It's probably from the 90s, but these sort of baskets are coming back. Any basket that's like a hanging basket, you can set out, you can like hang it on hooks. So any basket like this, if you see it at the Goodwill, they're definitely back in that farmhouse style. To decorate this, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of greenery from the boxwood garlands that I use from Hobby Lobby. And I'll just cut off a few of those and put them hanging from my basket. Now on the other side, I'm adding in this corbel that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby. But next to it, I wanted to make a planter bucket. And I was inspired by like those paint can planters. And I didn't have any old paint cans on hand. So I went to Ace Hardware and their paint cans were like, and they were like something like $7. So I found this plastic Ace bucket and it was red, but it had like the paint can handle. It was $3. So I got that instead. So with my planter, I just taped off the handle at the top and then I spray painted it with one coat of that flat black spray paint. Next, I just took some pages out of a book that I had that I picked up at the thrift store. And I'm just going to Mod Podge the pages around my book. And there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. I'm just trying to cover up all the red. So I'm just kind of overlapping the pages, putting a few at the bottom, and just kind of getting the look that I'm going for with the pages. Next, I'm gonna let that completely dry before I add any paint. And then I wanted to come in and give it a really worn and distressed look. So I'm gonna be using a brown paint and I'm simply just going to kind of wipe it along the edges. And then if I get too much paint, I'll just use a rag and wipe it off. I'm gonna repeat that same step with black paint. Next, I will add in some white paint from Waverly, and I'll actually probably add in more white than I did with the darker colors, and this is just going to add to the distressed look. Mm -hmm. 
The last step is just going to be to take off my tape. And then I added in a plant from Ikea. So the next thing I wanted to make were some fun bowls and I was inspired by this set of bowls that I found for $5 at the Goodwill. They were a set of stacking bowls. You can find these at most thrift stores, but I picked up this set for $5. So I just wanted three bowls. So I picked out, you know, the three like large, medium and small bowls for this project. Next, I just spray painted them with probably three thin coats of white spray paint. When you're doing bowls, you wanna be careful because the paint will run down. So I like to do maybe three, sometimes four thin coats, flipping them over and doing different sides. Next in Cricut Design Space, I just typed up three little vinyl sayings that said like large and then how many quarts it was for each of the bowls. Then I printed them out on self-adhesive vinyl that you can get at Joann's or Hobby Lobby or pretty much anywhere. And then I just weeded that out. To apply it to your bowls, you can use the tape to go on it. I was a little concerned that it was going to pull the spray paint off, so I just picked them up and individually put them on. And I repeated that for all of my bowls. And for $5, I have this cute set of farmhouse bowls. I found a clock at the thrift store that I wanted to add to my shelf. So my thrift store has a clock section, so I'm gonna see if I can find anything that would work for my shelf. Okay, let's see, I like this one. This one's $5. I think that one could actually really work. Let's see. They have a few larger ones. I think I'm gonna get this one. I really liked the color of this clock and it didn't need much to it. I decided I wanted to add a little bit of white paint just to distress it a little bit. So I just took some Waverly white chalk paint, just a little bit on a brush, and I just kind of dabbed it and wiped it along the side of my clock. I came back in with a rag and pulled off a majority of the paint. This will help to like smear it and just make it look more a part of the piece and you won't have weird brush lines. So that's all I did to this clock. I just put a book underneath it. And then next to it, I added in a plant that I already had on hand and put it to the side. I like this set of three candle holders. They're kind of like a bronze color. So I think they would be cute maybe in like a black color. So I think I'm gonna get them. I didn't really change these candlesticks very much, but I did want to make them a flat black. I felt like that made them look a little bit more modern. So I just used some Rust-Oleum flat black paint and sprayed on, I think it was two coats on these. And that literally was all I did. And I think it really kind of updated these candlesticks. So this next project I was really excited about. I found this sign at the Goodwill for $2. 
It was originally a sign from Hobby Lobby, so I really liked the frame on it, but not so much the picture. When I was at Dollar Tree the other day, I came across this placemat, so cute. It was navy, so it like really went with my dining room perfectly. And I love using Dollar Tree placemats as pictures, so I knew this would work great for this frame. So all you need to do is just measure out where the edge of your frame is. And I'm simply just going to measure a line and then I'm gonna cut my placemat down to size. Now I just kind of eyeballed this, so I would kind of put the placemat in, cut a little bit more whenever I needed it to be cut. Next, I used hot glue to hot glue it into the center of my frame. I did have some areas around the edge that didn't get completely covered. So what I decided to do was just take my twine and I'm going to hot glue it to the inside to cover that up and you would never know. This sign only cost me $3 and I think it is adorable. So to finish off this shelf, I'm going to add some cutting boards that I already had, but they did come from the thrift store. I think cutting boards are great in the background. They just add a wood element and a little bit of texture. Okay, so these blue jars would make a cute grouping. This one's $1.50, and then this is $1.50. They're all, uh, that, I don't know why that one's a dollar. I think I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna add the blue jars in front of my cutting board to finish off this shelf. Now on the bottom shelf, I'm going to add this really cool wood container that I got from Legacy Home Decor. I will link it down in the description box if you're interested. And then to fill it up, I didn't want to add any greenery, so I thought I would add some thrifted books. When I'm at the thrift store looking for books, I'm mainly looking for books that are hardback. I like ones that have like a dark, kind of like a black cover. And if it's kind of in a home decor interest, I like that even better. So I'll show you the ones that I like to pick up. Okay, so a book like this that has like a black hardcover looks great, especially when it's sitting out like this. I also will pick up things in blue. I love this one. This is like a little poem book. So I like the subject matter. And so anything kind of in like blues, greens, black, I will pick up. So the next DIY that I'm gonna do is updating some fun mason jars. I already had these mason jars on hand, but I wanted to add some fun principles to the front of them. So I went to a website called Blesser House and I'll link it down in the description box and she has some free printables. So I just printed off some farmhouse ones that I thought were cute and I'm gonna cut out the two biggest ones to use on my mason jar and then I'll use the rest of them later on. To attach these to your jars, all you wanna do is put down a layer of Mod Podge and then just smooth them out so that there's no air bubbles. Once these have a chance to completely dry, I'm just going to come back in and add a little bit of white paint around the edge of my jar. It just makes it look a little bit more distressed and rustic, and I like the way it looks, but you can leave this step out. Thank you. 
Next, I'm just going to fill it with a couple of leaves that were on a stem that I picked up at Walmart. And then on the other side of my shelf, I'm just going to add in a thrifted book. In this basket I just picked up, it's part of Walmart's new spring stuff. I believe it was around $3.50 and such a cute little basket and I just love it. So I'm gonna add that to the shelf. This copper cup, I literally got it for, I think it was like 50 cents at the thrift store, so cheap. Now I don't like to use a ton of greenery, but I think it makes a big impact when you add in just a little bit. I'm gonna use some of those leaves from Walmart and I'm also going to use some of those boxwood sprigs and just put them on my shelf just to add a little finishing touch. And here's a look at the entire shelf. Don't worry, I still have more DIYing to show you. I'm gonna show you how I put together my table and you guys, this is probably my favorite look for my table that I've done in a long time. So the first thing I'm gonna put down on my table is just a simple table runner. I picked this up at Kirkland's for $12 last year. I really like shopping at Kirkland's and buying their stuff on sale because when the things are on sale, I think they're a pretty good price. On top of that, I'm gonna put this tray from JCPenney. I showed you guys this in my JCPenney Christmas video, and I just love this. This tray has actually been sitting on my kitchen table, and I'm moving it into the dining room, so I love having trays like this for my tables. So I wanna get a bunch of different clear glass containers in like a varying shape that I can spray paint and put out on the touch. So I'm gonna to try to pick out some of the interesting shapes. So I think I picked all the pieces out that I want to use. I just kind of went for like interesting shapes and just a variation in sizes. Most of them are smooth finish though. I didn't get any like crazy texture. I decided I'm gonna spray all the jars with white paint. And when you're doing jars, just make sure that you do thin coats. I did four really thin coats. And after the first coat, I flipped all the jars over, did another coat, and then just did it till they were covered. If your coats are too thick, it's gonna start running down. So just use a nice thin coat. And I usually wait probably, I would say maybe two hours between coats. Like I don't give it a ton of time to dry. I just kind of get it where it's dry to the touch. Next, I'm gonna use those remaining labels that I printed off earlier, and I'm just going to cut out the remaining five labels and add those sporadically to my jars. I don't want a label on every jar, but I think on a few, it'll make it look more random and a little more farmhouse. So I'm just gonna put Mod Podge on the back of the labels and put them directly on my containers, making sure I smooth out any bubbles. Once everything had a chance to dry, I set the vases up, just kind of moving them around till I got the desired look that I was going for. Walmart has lamb's ear back again, but they're selling it in a pack of two. So it's actually $2. I don't really know why they're doing that. I don't know if you're getting more than last year. So I ended up buying two of these. So it gave me four stems of the lamb's ear. And I'm just going to put the lamb's ear into my containers sporadically, not in every container. And you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think of this new centerpiece.
And here's a look at my dining room all finished. You guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on adding in the thrift store and the Dollar Tree together. Did you like this style of video? Let me know below. Your comments are really important to me. If you're new here, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of our DIYs. And I'll link our last video for you right here. And I'll talk to you guys in our next one. Bye.